If you've ever researched ancient Persia or have engaged in discussions related to Iran in general, you're bound to come across the claim that ancient Persians were actually white, or at least that the ancient Persian elites were white, and that modern-day Iranians are heavily mixed with Arabs and Mongol invaders from the Middle Ages. A lot of people that make this claim have an agenda of some kind or another. They're mainly white nationalists who want to essentially take credit for ancient Persian civilization, while simultaneously labeling modern-day Iranians as mixed-race imposters of some kind. Really, white nationalist claims to Iranian history are no different than when a black nationalist tries to say that they were the true Israelites, or that they are the true Egyptians, or when the Albanians claim that Alexander the Great was Illyrian, for, for that matter. Now, something that is true is that Europeans, Iranians, and North Indians do have some very obvious genetic, linguistic, cultural, and religious similarities. They all have an Indo-European, Western step herder element to them. My friend over at Iran Talk on YouTube has covered this topic very extensively. I don't think anybody has done more videos on Iranian genetics than he has. I can't think of anyone else on YouTube off the top of my head. I'd say that Iran Talk brings up three central claims about Iranian genetics. One, that the ancient Iranians were not white. Two, the Arabs and Mongols had little impact on Iranian genetics. Three, modern day Iranians are similar to ancient Iranians. Despite the fact that he's supported these claims with evidence, he still gets detractors every once in a while, so I've decided to prove these claims myself with my own G25 models, just in case anybody is still trying to argue that somehow these claims are false. So first and foremost, I'm going to model copper, bronze, and iron age populations from around the Iranian region to show how European they really were, and also to show how Iranian genetics developed over time. The first proxy I have is Neolithic Iranians from the Ganjadara settlement. Now, the people living around Iran before the Indo-Iranian migrations would have had a lot of Iran Neolithic ancestry. I also have Caucasus hunter-gatherer, which is closely related to the Neolithic Iranians, and they lived pretty close in proximity as well. Now, we also have Yamnaya Samara and Western hunter-gatherer population averages as a proxy, and po the population averages of Anatolian Neolithic farmers. The reason why I used all three of these instead of just using Andronovo or Sintashta is because some ancient Iranians have Anatolian Neolithic farmer ancestry that does not come indirectly from the Andronovo. So this breakdown will be more comprehensive in that sense. Now we also have an Ongate population average as a proxy for ancient ancestral South Indians because they're the closest thing we have to them. And some Iranian groups could have some of this ancestry indirectly via interaction with the Indus Valley civilization. Now we also have Levant PPNB, Iberomerusian, Devil's Gate, and Yoruba population averages, and that will measure Near Eastern, North African, East Asian, and Sub-Saharan African admixture, respectively. First up, we have the population averages for various sites around Copper Age Iran. We can see that Iran Neolithic is obviously going to be a very large component of these groups, peaking at about 69% in Tepe Hisar. Their Anatolian Neolithic farmer ancestry ranges from 16 to 25 percent, which isn't really all that surprising, uh, with somewhat similar amounts of Caucasus hunter-gatherer ancestry. In terms of Levantine ancestry, only the Haji Firuz and Segabi have significant amounts, uh, which makes sense considering that they're located further to the west and that Tepe Hisar is located further to the north. Keep in mind that Tepe Hisar doesn't technically actually have any steppe herder ancestry, this is almost certainly, uh, you know, Eastern hunter-gatherer or any lithic steppe ancestry. Now moving on to Bronze Age Iranian sites. As we can see, this is when steppe and small amounts of Western hunter-gatherer ancestry was introduced from the Andronovo migrations into this region, and this ancestry peaks in the Haji Faru site in Western Iran. Obviously, this was within the first few generations that the Indo-European speakers would have moved in, so the steppe ancestry has not yet been diluted by native Iranian elements. So while the Bronze Age Haji Firuz site has over half European ancestry, the rest is still related to the Chalcolithic Iranians. Yet again, there is a significant amount of Iran Neolithic, ANF, and CHG in all these population averages, with Levantine ancestry ranging from 0-35% to 35 depending on the site and period. Ancient ancestral South Indian ancestry is also very prominent in the shahar e Sokta site, uh, which would have been on the periphery of the Indus Valley civilization, so it really comes as no surprise to me at all. In Iron Age populations, the steppes seem to level out to about 10 to 15 percent, with A and F ancestry hovering around 15 to 20 percent. Again, we also have significant amounts of CHG and Neolithic Levantine, but keep in mind this is way before any sort of Muslim conquest would have 
even occurred, right? I mean, they've had this component for a while now, and it's nowhere near as high as it would be in modern Arabs or Levantine people. So taking all this into account, ancient Iranians cannot really be compared to any European group. Sure, we could say that the Sintashta-derived people from the Andronovo culture that mixed in with the native Iranians were Europeans, and that Europeans have ANF and CHG ancestry as well, but this doesn't really account for the Neolithic Iranian and Levantine ancestry that they have. There are some southern European groups that have smaller amounts of Iran Neolithic and Levantine Neolithic ancestry, and they've had this for a long time. I made a video on this topic pretty recently, but this is nowhere near the amount, you know, that would make them comparable to Iranians. Moving on to my model for modern-day Iranian groups, keep in mind that for the sake of simplicity, I'm just going to be sticking to the Iranic groups within Iran and I have not altered the source populations for this. And taking a look at this, it appears that modern-day Iranians are very close to Iron Age Iranians, with some very slight differences in admixture proportions, as well as small amounts of East Asian ancestry in some population averages. If we take a look at the distance between Iron Age Haji Firuz, we can see that the closest groups are mostly Iranic and Caucasian, including some Jewish groups that mix in with said populations. We can also go ahead and see where Iranian groups cluster on a PCA plot. So this is just a West Eurasia PCA, it's on G25 views if you want to look at it yourself. And I've kind of zoomed in here a bit. And as you can see, the Iranian groups are up here, and they cluster closely to the modern Caucasian groups as well. Some modern Caucasian groups. Not only that, they cluster very closely to, um, they plot very closely to ancient Caucasian groups, ancient Iranian groups um, as well. And yeah, the, they don't cluster that closely to say like Bedouins or Yemenites or Saudis or Egyptians for that matter. And that's just uh, more evidence uh, of that Iranians really are not that closely related to Arabs at all. There was no um, uh, like Arabian like upheaval of Iranian genetics that occurred in the Middle Ages that just I, I don't think that happened I don't think there's any evidence to support that that happened and I mean yeah that's that's really all there is to say about that topic so what's the main takeaway from all this information well it's that ancient Iranians can't really be considered to be white in any way now they are West Eurasian and they are related to Europeans in a few ways mainly uh, you know via the migrations of Indo-Iranian speakers into the Iranian plateau during the Bronze Age however because they mixed in you know that doesn't really mean that ancient Iranians were white and if you do want to consider ancient Persians white, you'd have to accept that modern Persians are white too because, you know, I just proved that they basically haven't changed at all since the Iron Age. There was also no genetic upheaval from the Arabs that spread Islam into the region. There's absolutely nothing that would suggest that. There does appear to be small amounts of ancestry associated with Mongol invaders, but again, there's no significant genetic upheaval of Iran during the Middle Ages or something. I mean, this is just a very small amount. But that's really all I wanted to say. Like I said earlier, Iran Talk does a lot of in-depth videos, uh, you know, on topics like this. Um, but I just wanted to solidify my position on this topic. Anyways, that's all for today. I'll see you guys in the next video.